word as well as the power of the words that we speak into other people's lives. I thought I'd take this chance to ask Jennifer some of her thoughts about that. Um, Jennifer, can you think of a time that God used someone else's words to speak life, hope, um, vision into your life? Just anything that comes to mind. Oh, yes. In fact, whenever I hear a similar question, I immediately hear my mother's voice. Mm. Because um, your, your friends may not know my story, but in a nutshell, I was declared legally blind at 15 and had a prognosis of total blindness. You know, so my world crashed, right. uh, essentially. Um, everything changed. And I remember my mother saying from the time I was a little girl, and then she continued to say it even after the onset of blindness, mm -hmm. you can do anything you put your mind to. Mm -hmm. And though, though that statement in and of itself could sound humanistic, that was not the intention of her right. statement. Yeah. She said that within the, the whole paradigm of my faith life, anything that I put my mind to, I can do. Mm -hmm. Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ. Mm -hmm. And I cannot tell you, even as a 47-year-old woman, how many times I will find myself in the moment of a crisis of, oh, I can't do that, I can't do that. And I will hear my mother's voice. Mm -hmm. You can do anything you put your mind to. So here's something wow. very cool. My mom was at a conference where I was speaking just last weekend. And there was this precious 15-year-old girl there who had just been diagnosed with the exact same eye disease I have. And her mom was there. And they discovered that my mother was at the conference. So they went and visited with my mom. And I overheard my mother saying to that little 15-year-old girl, you can do anything you put your mind wow. to. Wow. And, and those words spoke life to me. And when I heard that, I just thought, thank you, Lord. Because my mama just spoke life to that young girl, too. Mm, that's very really neat mm. story. You know, as I listen to your story, I think about my own mom. When I was 16, I was in a really bad car accident where I should have been killed. Mm. And miraculously, I wasn't. Now, at the time, I did not know Christ. I did not have a relationship with Christ. And my mom didn't either. Actually, at the time, my mom was kind of reading a lot of New Age books. Mm. And, um, but I found myself in the hospital um, with just a few bumps and bruises. And my mom came in, and she looked into my eyes, and she said, Renee, God must have a purpose for your life. Wow. because he spared it tonight. Wow. And in the months and years that followed, I actually went through a pit of clinical depression. Just mm -hmm. just other, unrelated, mm -hmm. but I kept hearing my mom's words. God must have a purpose for you. God wow. must have a purpose for you. And I would think when I would want to take my life and end the darkness that I was in, I would think, who am I to take my life when the God of the universe spared it? Mm -hmm. and, and it's like her words painted a picture of hope. Mm -hmm. on the canvas of my heart. Yeah. And then I went towards, you know, I tried to to make that picture be fulfilled mm -hmm. by searching for the God who had a purpose for my life. Wow. But I think of other people mm -hmm. whose mothers didn't speak hope oh. into their heart. Yeah, or, or spoke fathers, something exactly, worse. Exactly, yeah. spoke wounds. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, or fathers, or friends, oh. or somebody else. And what do you have to share with them um, to erase those mm. hurtful words and those black marks yeah. on the chalkboard of their hearts and their thoughts, what do you have to share with them? Well, I know one of the things that I have learned is that, um, in fact, I, I learned it in, in a hard, in a very difficult places in life, that sometimes we can take words we've heard from other people, just like the words that were so positive for my mother, we can take very negative, harmful words from other people that are significant to us and start to believe them. And assume that because that person is important to us, that every word they speak should be important to us. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I have learned that um, we've got to so align ourselves with the truth of who God is mm -hmm. and who he says we are, mm -hmm. that we're able to do what I call the three R's. Okay? Okay. And here they are. One is recognize. Mm -hmm. Recognize what's truth. If someone in your life is saying to you, you're such a loser, well, you may feel like a loser, but who you are and what you feel like are not always the same thing. Right. And there's nothing in Scripture that calls us a loser. It says we're more than conquerors, right. that we're victorious through Christ. So we recognize lies. Mm -hmm. Once we recognize them, the second R is we refuse them. Mm -hmm. We just stop them in their tracks and say, no, that is a lie. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5, the Apostle Paul says we're to hold every thought captive, mm -hmm. and make it obey Christ. So you refuse it. You don't let it in. And then the last R is that you rephrase it mm. with truth. That's how you make it obey. So if somebody in your life says you're never going to amount to anything, 
or you're such a loser, and they have used words in a very destructive fashion, you recognize them, you ask God for the grace to refuse them, and then you rephrase it with truth. No, the word says I am more than a conqueror. Mm -hmm. The word says that it is God who works in me to both to will and to work for his good pleasure. So I have a purpose. And once you have rephrased that with truth, then those are the words that you believe and you write them over any lie that has ever been written on your heart. Wow, that's powerful. That's easy to remember. Okay, recognize. Mm -hmm. We'll submit. <laughs> Phrase. That's, That's it. Right. Not just replace, but rephrase. That's I right. I love that. Love that. Love that.